Let's do it. Well, hello. It's been too long since I've seen you. It's been like, it's got to be like close to a decade. It's insane. But it's good to see you and you're looking hot. I got some biceps going on. You got good. I, I'm about to turn 40, and I think I'm the healthiest I've ever been. I haven't had a single cheat at all since the first weekend in January. So that's oh like my over. Oh gosh, that's incredible. Actually, wow, well, you are looking good on it. You're an inspiration. Well, so are, so are you. I mean, I, I would say when people think of you, one of the many things they think of is somebody who is really fit. Is that a lot of pressure? Like, do you do you do do you do you enjoy it still being fit, or or how do you how do you deal with that? You know what? The funny thing is, I think I'm probably sportier now than I ever was. I I'm a complete gym bunny, love it, but I've also been competing in triathlons, so it's like, uh, you know, do you know what I find? And and you will, I'm sure you will agree. It's not just a physical thing, it's mental as well. You know, it's good for me emotionally. And I, I just feel great. And then I think when you see the physical results as well, it's good for your self-esteem. It's just, it's such a positive thing. And, I, you know, I know lots of people hate exercise, but I just want to try and encourage people to just do a bit because it does make you feel so great. Well, that's the best advice I can give people is, but the bit that I share with them is just walk. Walking is effective and it's easy and it's free. Everybody knows how and to do it. Can do it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, since we we're talking this, I wasn't even planning it. Like, what's your routine? What do you do? <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, it's, it really varies. I kind of find because I'm on the road right now. I'm touring, as you know, and it's hard because the shows are really physical. So in the day, I'm tired, but I always I want to get in the gym because it makes me feel ready. It makes me feel alive. So like today, my little girl was helping me out in the gym, which was very cute. Aww. So we did a little bit of cardio. I was on the treadmill, and I like kind of doing hit sessions, you know. So I jump off the treadmill, high intensity, do a little strength stuff. For those, that's so, high intent for, for 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 somebody who doesn't know, that's a high intensity workout. Yeah, it means you yeah, don't give yourself so much of a break. You're going bam, 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 right? Yeah, but you know, I just I kind of go on how I'm feeling. So, um, you know, I'd love to. I really want to go out and do a big long run, but I kind of I can't get my head around that. But if I go in the gym for like forty five minutes and then I can I can hit it hard and have a rest and have a stretch, then you know, I just kind of do whatever's feeling good on the day. I think it's so impressive you're even able to work out when you're on the road or traveling. That's for me the hardest. Like when I'm home, it's easy to like mm -hmm. get everything lined up. But when I'm on the road, it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, clearly the thing that people think of the most when they think of you is music. Last year, you released an album. You're on tour mm -hmm. right now. And tomorrow, or sat whenever I post this, this Saturday, you're having yeah. a... Uh, 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 well, it's your home now. London is your home, right? Yeah, it has been for a long for time. For a long time. Yeah. So your hometown show, and we're streaming it live on my website, which I'm very excited about. Um, the, well, I, I, I love you, and this all comes from a place of love. And I think mm -hmm. that, uh, out of curiosity, you know, when, when, when people back in the day signed these deals to be in boy bands and girl groups, a lot of them weren't really good deals. Mm -hmm. I would imagine, I would hope, you don't ever have to work again, right? You're doing it because mm -hmm. you, you want to, because you love it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think, like, with anybody, it kind of, it depends on the lifestyle you want to have, you know? But of course, the Spice Girls, we were hugely successful, and... You know, and you're right. I, you know, I, I have been very comfortable in my life. I've had an incredible time. But I love music. I love to perform. So no matter what, I want to continue to do that. And I feel very excited about this tour, this show, and this album because I feel like I'm going into a new chapter in my life. I've gone through lots of changes. And one of the big changes has been the sound. You know, musically, I wanted to make an electronic album. So I was listening to loads of artists I love from the 90s, like Massive Attack and Porter's Head, but also listening to loads of the stuff that's out there now, Major Lazer, DJ Snake, you know, some EDM stuff, some great younger artists like Jack Garrett and Murr, who's a great Danish artist who's just blown up everywhere. And it was great just taking influences from all these people and creating my own sound. I've got a new band 
and it's just incredible. We've done two shows so far. No, we've done three. We've done three. Glasgow, Liverpool, and Manchester. And every night, it has just gone crazy. So London is always insane. So it's going to be incredible. And one of the things, and maybe I'm wrong, I don't, you, you kind of do it all on your own, right? Like you have your own label, and you're doing it outside of the, the major label system, which yeah. can be a bit challenging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what? There's, there's good bits and bad bits. And the great thing is the freedom you have. You know, you can be creative. And, and I felt on this album, like I had nothing to lose. You know, I just, I wanted to to approach everything differently. And it was really liberating. And, you know, of course, the things you miss is the infrastructure of a major label, you know, the funding to do have great marketing, great advertising. But I have a wonderful fan base, of course, from the Spice Girls days. And it's international and it's wonderful. Here in the UK already, I'm seeing people who've traveled from Brazil and Australia tonight, America, Canada, all across Europe. It's incredible. Well, your fan base also is from your own solo music too, not just the Spice Girls. Like I and many like your solo stuff, obviously too. And those are the people that are all. I would say those are the people that are seeing you in concert. The fans of your solo music. Yeah, but I, you know, I think I, you know, I, I can never forget. Without the Spice Girls, none of this would have happened, you know? So I'm truly grateful for that. I'm Aww. really proud of it too. And you know, there, there's loads of Spice fans out there. And in fact. We might even do a cheeky little spice number on Saturday. Oh. Well, since you're talking about the Spice Girls, I need to talk about the Spice Girls as a huge Spice Girls fan. I need to I need to have a moment here to advocate, which is you've said that you're not going to do a reunion unless it's all five. Mm-hmm. As a huge Spice Girls fan, I don't need Victoria. I love no. her. I love her. I didn't know. No, I love her, but I don't need her. I went to the I went to the reunion tour. She didn't do much. <laughs> you did. You know All what? of the other girls had their big solo number. They made the most of their time. You made the most of your fucking time. You were fucking like lifted up in the air and like <laughs> you made the most of it. Uh, or maybe that was Jerry. Well, the, you, you, mo- you both, all of you, all of you except for Victoria made the most of that solo moment. She just kind of like lip synced and walked down the runway. I love her, but she didn't add much. Do we really need all five for a reunion? Well, that's the way I feel about it. Because it's not just what happens on stage, you know. It's what happens off stage as well. Like all group of friends, there's a dynamic. And, you know, when anyone's missing, when Jerry left in 98, it was really sad. You know, we did continue and we toured America without her. And, you know, and it was great. But without without one of the Spice Girls, it's not the real thing, in my opinion. When you read something about one of the other girls, good or bad... Do you reach out to them? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, the thing is, we are all in each other's lives anyway, you know, and, and we like all groups of friends, you know, we have our ups and downs and, and sometimes you're busy and you lose touch, and, but it's never for too long. And then, of course, you know, so much has happened in all of our lives. You know, we're all parents and, you know, so many things are going on. Spice World is a busy old place. And, you know, there are times when, when we do need to pull together. Have you reached out to Mel C Mel B recently? Of course, of course. You know, obviously it's not something that I'm, you know, comfortable talking about. Of course, about, no. But, you know, any of the girls, um, you know, there's highs and lows in, in all of our lives and she she's having a really tough time right now, but you know, we're all there for each other. I love that. In America, there's been some chatter over some people arguing that we shouldn't use the word girl anymore yeah oh, what? Spice, we mean it in, in Spice Girls it, when talking about women that we shouldn't refer to women as girls oh everyone's gone mad please <laughs> so girl power is still very much alive you would say yeah absolutely and I think you know we've seen some incredible scenes you know over the last few months you know we've had great women's marches all over the world there's been a great coming together and, and I was I was actually involved in um, a women's march here in the UK around International Women's Day and it's about gender equality 
you know it's not just about women it's not about girls it's about everyone and I think one of the wonderful things that I've experienced through my time working in music is how much more acceptance there is you know I'm very lucky I live in a very cosmopolitan city and I know not every word is like that but my daughter is eight years old and she you know she knows friends of mine she knows she knows girls who live with guys she knows guys who live with guys and girls who live with girls and it's normal to her and it really excites me because there's a generation of children growing up who it's you know we're moving forward everything's cool what's the most challenging or exciting thing about having an eight-year-old because mine's four <laughs> and two i know congratulations well that's new since i saw you yeah i know <laughs> um i think the challenging things are um, you know, I think it's hard to discipline and they need it and you know it's good for them um, and they really benefit from it. But um, yeah, try not to spoil her too much because I know it won't do her any good. Um, and yeah, being away from her is hard. Being a working parent, it's tough. I, I go through all those things too. And, and also it's, it's, it's tough because we are public people so others are going to have opinions on who we are and what we do and and that yeah, makes it more challenging as well also since i saw you I, I don't even know if i told you this but i freaking love your broadway or your, your musical theater album ah. that was so unexpected and yeah. i loved that if people who are watching this haven't heard that i can't strongly enough recommend seeking out that album stages because it's so good um, I kind of want a sequel to that. There's so much musical theater music out there. I would love uh, that next. So much. Yeah, you know, I because I, I did a show in the West End. I did a show called Blood Brothers. Mm -hmm. And then I toured with Jesus Christ Superstar. We did a big arena tour in the UK and over in Australia. And I grew up loving musical theater. So there were all these songs that I'd learned as a kid and some I'd done in like amateur productions. And... It was just really, really fun. After doing a bit of theatre, it was like, there's kind of a bit of a wish list of songs I'd like to put out there. So I worked with one of my favourite songwriters and producers, Peter Vitesi, and we made stages, yeah, and we released it. I think it was 2012 that came out. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you already know what you're going to do next? Do you know what? I'm so excited about this new sound. It's working so well live. The audience is reacting so brilliantly to it. I'm quite keen to get back into the studio. I'd like to come up with some really interesting collaborations and just like continue on this path and see where it leads me. Awesome. Well, as an international fan, can we expect maybe some overseas touring anytime soon? Fingers crossed, this is the plan. Like with this album, uh, you know, this rebirth, this new beginning that I feel I'm having, I really want to get back out there internationally. I have so many wonderful international fans coming to the UK to see me perform. I feel like I owe them a visit. Oh, I love that. I would love that. It's been 10 years since you've been in America yeah. uh, performing. <laughs> you got to come back. Yeah. Well, that's that. I'm excited to watch you on Saturday. I love you. Always will. And thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Rose. It's so good to see you. You too. Enjoy Saturday. I will. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.